Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Let's continue going through builds for Rogue Trader. And this time, I want to talk about Cassia, another character who's going to be very, very central in my Imperialist run and quite possibly the most powerful party member you get in the entire game. Really looking forward to breaking her down. Before we get into what the archetypes provide, we need to talk about a couple of things that she automatically comes with. So she's a void born character and automatically has the fortune feature. So whenever she fails a dodge, parry, characteristic, or skill test, she can re-roll it with a 20% chance of success. And obviously this is fantastic to have on any character. And additionally, any enemy dodge or parry against her has a 20% chance to fail after a successful roll. That doesn't matter much for her particular build because she doesn't do direct attacks in that manner that can be dodged or parried, but it's still nice to know. She also gets Path of the Open Soul, which gives all resistance tests against her a penalty equal to twice your perception bonus. And this is absolutely going to play into her overall build in a major way. The last thing you should be aware of is she comes with the Lidless Stare ability, which is going to cause all enemies in a cone to suffer damage ranging from 1 plus her willpower bonus all the way up to 4 plus her willpower bonus. And the affected targets must also pass a plus 30 bonus willpower resistance test or become stunned. Now, keep in mind, plus 30 means that it helps your enemies. It doesn't help you because you're trying to roll as low a number as possible. So it's difficult to stun enemies using this ability, but because of a couple of other things you'll do, it should happen all the time. All right, so that's everything that she pretty much automatically comes with that you need to be aware of. So let's go ahead and get into her archetype, which is officer. She's gonna start out with officer and that means she has voice of command, which is going to allow you to boost the characteristics of a particular ally. And once you use this on them, it'll let her use the rest of her officer abilities on that particular character from any distance, which usually would be very, very important. But in this particular build, it's just kind of a nice to have. She's going to focus on other mechanics most of the time. At level two, she automatically has a bonus in persuasion, which is unfortunate because we're not going to increase persuasion for this build. Again, this character is going to be paired with Lord High Slander, the officer I already did a build for last week. And of course, he specializes in all of the conversation related skills. So unfortunately, even though there's no way to change this, it doesn't help her build at all. And then she's also automatically going to come with Bring It Down, which allows you to give one ally an extra turn with a couple of action points, but no movement points. Uh, obviously, this is a fantastic ability to have, especially when you can use it to pump your main damage dealer. So that means both Cassia and Lord High Slander can ensure that Argenta just gets turn after turn after turn. Then at level four, she's gonna get Finest Hour, which is basically bring it down on steroids, providing an ally with an extra turn where they have full AP and MP, and there is no attack limit during that turn. Once again, wanna give this to Argenta and then let her just go absolutely crazy. Um, she'll also come with the Inspire Courage talent, which is going to trigger when she targets an ally with an ability for the first time in a round and grants that ally temporary wounds equal to a willpower bonus. Uh, this is another wasted talent, doesn't really help in this particular build, but she has it, so it just is what it is. All right, finally at level five, you can start shaping Cassia into who you want her to be. We're gonna focus on willpower because we're gonna be focusing on her navigator damaging talents and all of them use willpower very heavily. So this is really gonna benefit her. When you don't increase willpower, next up is perception. Perception is huge in her build, helps her both offensively and defensively. So you want to pump that as high as possible. When willpower and or perception are not available next up is fellowship because towards the end of the game she'll be able to circle back and focus either on officer or grand strategist mechanics whichever one you prefer and it's going to be helpful for her to have a higher fellowship level and even beyond that toughness weapon skill and ballistic skill do absolutely nothing for Cassia. so there's just no reason to sink any points into them 
for your first talent, you're going to take Eye of Oblivion, which is going to cause all enemies within Cassia's line of sight to have their dodge and hit chance reduced by twice her perception bonus. This is just okay at the beginning of the game because you should be using Cassia more so in the back. She's not good as a frontliner right up front, but every so often a fight will break out in a way where she'll be able to see the enemies and this will trigger. And later on, it'll be absolutely fantastic. She'll be able to see the vast majority of the enemies you're going up against. And so this debuff will really, really help. Next on the list, I would take Guide of Souls. So this is going to cause you to start your turn with three additional movement points and the first ally targeted each turn by you will gain the same amount of additional movement points. This is huge for two reasons. One, again, she's on a team with Lord Heislander and he is going to, uh, by mid game, start each fight by giving her an extra turn. And so these movement points will help ensure she's able to navigate to the angle where she needs to be. On top of that, Early in the game, you're not going to have a lot of navigator mechanics to be able to use. So you're going to be giving your allies additional extra turns all the time. And this means, again, they'll have movement points they can use during those extra turns. You will not have bandwidth to pick up the move, move, move ability under officer in order to ensure that you can move your allies to where you want them to deal damage. And so this will help to ensure your extra turns are not wasted because your allies cannot get to where they need to be. And for your first ability, you're actually gonna take Notch of Purpose. You can ignore the bottom where it says she already has this feature. I'm doing this off a save that I ran during the beta. And in the beta, she automatically came with Notch of Purpose. That is no longer the case in the full version of the game. So you have to manually take this. This ability allows her to designate one cell. And then the enemy that is closest to that cell will move up to four cells towards it. If multiple enemies are within the same distance, then they all move. This probably doesn't seem all that useful right now, but it will in just a moment. In this same level, you are going to take the talent Perilous Ways, and this causes all enemies moved by your navigator abilities to suffer willpower bonus damage at the end of the movement. And this damage is increased for every two cells that the enemy has to move. Bananas. This talent combined with a couple of other abilities allows her to seriously, seriously devastate enemies. It's not going to be great against most bosses because usually they're going to be able to resist being forcibly moved. But a lot of times you're going to face 20 enemies plus and only two or three of them are elites or bosses. The rest of them are fodder that can still hit hard, but they should go down easier. Enemies like that, these force movement abilities that you pick up will absolutely tear them apart. Next up, take ebb and flow. Every second and fourth turn, you're going to gain an additional action point. On the first and third turn, you're going to gain 20 perception. The 20 perception is just okay right now. It's going to be a monster part of your build later on. But even right now, that additional action point is going to help to ensure you're able to use both your officer and your navigator abilities in the same turn. Also at this level, Cassia can increase her skill for the first time. So I go with awareness because her build heavily utilizes perception. And so it just makes sense for these two to go hand in hand. Next up, you can increase your finest hour heroic act. And I will go with the first upgrade, which is going to allow the ally that you select to deal extra damage. And until the end of combat, they're going to gain the effect of voice of command. So those characteristic bonuses are going to stay in place. Very nice. At the next level, you can no longer increase willpower, so remember to switch over to perception. All right, so now at the next level, you're really, really close to picking up an ability that is one of the best abilities in the game, but to make full use of it, she needs to be on the front line, which means the next few talents that you pick up are all geared around making sure she can stand on the front line and survive. So we're gonna start with Pass Unscathed, which is gonna allow her dodge to be calculated using perception instead of agility. Obviously, this is very helpful for her. And then the ability we wanna pick up is Point of Curiosity. So as opposed to Notch of Purpose, which only targets one enemy or 
multiple enemies if they're all within the same distance. Point of Curiosity lets you target all enemies in a six cell radius around a target point, and they must pass a willpower resistance test or immediately move three cells towards the point that you choose. And this is triggered regardless if the enemies are stunned or immobilized. This ability is insane and can basically allow you to clear out rooms in the right situation. But she has to be close enough to be able to land this where the largest amount of enemies are. So she really, really needs to be a frontliner to make the most of this ability. On this same level, you're going to choose Strange Vitality, and this is going to allow her to heal an amount of wounds equal to her willpower bonus at the beginning of every turn and she'll heal plus one additional wounds for every navigator talent that you have taken. And obviously you're taking a ton of them. In addition to this, the healing increases by one for every creature killed in between her turns. So all of this together, even if her defenses get shredded, as long as she's still on her feet, she will be healed for a considerable amount and it's gonna help her to survive on the front line. On the next level, you're going to take Mind Over Matter, which is going to cause her to make all resistance tests using willpower if that is the higher base characteristic for that test. In addition, if her willpower is higher than toughness, which it clearly is, her wounds are calculated using willpower. Absolutely fantastic. No question you want to take this. On the next level, you can no longer increase awareness, so I go with coercion. I'm going to have Heinrichs on the team, and usually he would increase coercion, but in this particular run, since I'm going Imperialis, I'm pretty sure uh, Adira is not going to make it. And there's no other character that I feel like can really concentrate on Lore Warp, so I'm going to have Heinrichs concentrate on Lore Warp and make sure somebody can man that ship post, and instead, I'm going to have Cassia uh, increase coercion to hopefully help during those speech checks. At the next level, she can increase willpower or perception, so make sure you increase fellowship. And then take the nimble talent, which is going to increase her dodge by 10%. Again, dodge is her main defensive mechanic, so this is absolutely fantastic for her. You get to choose another upgrade for Finest Hour, so I would take the last one, which is going to cause kills made during the extra turn this ability provides to also increase the allies action points and movement points by one a number of times up to your fellowship bonus and this ability can be redirected to another character all of this very nice all right that's all the mechanics for officers so it's time to move into grand strategies there are links to a spreadsheet with all of these abilities along with my overview of the mechanics for officer and grand strategies if you find that helpful or you need more information. The main reason we're going to choose grand strategies is that they automatically go first in combat. The only um, class that has something that overrides this is officer. Uh, they have a talent that allows them to go first with only being able to use officer abilities during that additional turn. So that means Lord Highslander is automatically going to be able to go first. He'll give Cassia an extra turn and allow her to use her navigator abilities that we've already went over. Then once he gets through, Cassia is going to be the uh, person who immediately goes next. And she's either going to use more navigator abilities or she can give a character an extra turn or whatever she sees fit. Very, very powerful combination right at the beginning of combat, both defensively and offensively. Now, Grand Strategist does also provide combat tactics. This allows you to lay down frontline, backline, and rear areas that give bonuses to all of your different party members. You can play around with this in order to give your team a small buff, but you're not really pumping up uh, fellowship and certainly not intelligence enough in order to really, really make use of these mechanics. And they are kind of complicated to get into. So personally, I would probably just ignore it. No matter what archetype we chose, we were gonna be wholly focused on navigator mechanics anyway. As an exemplar, if you want to dive more into grand strategies, you can. At level two, you're gonna be able to pick your first ability and we're going to take Waking Nightmare, which is gonna cause all the enemies within a four cell radius to suffer a penalty to their willpower and toughness that scales with your willpower bonus. And it's a pretty massive penalty. It's gonna be at least 14. So yeah, definitely, definitely nice. 
Next up, we're actually going to take a Voidborn talent, just a Flesh Wound, which is going to give you a 20% chance to survive after suffering lethal damage, surviving with just one wound. Obviously, this is going to really, really help. If things have gone poorly on the front line, this gives you yet another chance to keep her on her feet so she can continue devastating enemies. At level four, you're automatically going to get the heroic act taken hold. I'm not going to bother going into it because you should never be using it. It is always a better choice to just go ahead and go with the one provided from officer. Next up, you're going to get additional action point. Obviously, this is fantastic for our action economy. It's going to allow her to use more of those mechanics every turn. Your ability to increase characteristics has also been refreshed. So go ahead and go back to increasing willpower. For your next ability, pick up Mastery of Time. Whenever a creature in combat gains an extra turn, you're going to gain a stacking plus five bonus to willpower until the end of combat. Both you and Lord Highslander will probably be giving uh, characters extra turns uh, at least in the first round, but probably every other round as well. So this is very, very useful to have. For your next ability, pick up Warp Curse Unleashed. This is going to increase all warp damage and more importantly, all types of incoming damage by an amount that scales with your willpower bonus. Very, very useful against bosses. And just in general, Cassia is not as useful against bosses because her force movement abilities aren't going to work as well on them. So this all of a sudden makes her significantly more useful during those boss battles, helping the rest of the team to take those characters out. Your ability to increase skills has been refreshed as well. So go ahead and go back to increasing awareness. And then next up, we're going to take Tonicity. It's going to give you a plus one additional damage for every five bonus characteristic of your equipped staff and castigating, infusing, and devastating count as characteristics. So basically, the way it works is navigators get special staffs that have a particular feature on them, such as castigating, which is my favorite one. And then they're going to give a bonus to your willpower as well. So I think the staff that I had towards the end of Act 3, and we'll look at it later on in the video, but I think it gave a bonus of 30 overall to my characteristics. So that's going to be plus 6 damage for all of my different abilities. Very, very nice. The so next level, you can no longer increase willpower, so go ahead and switch over to Perception. And next, you're going to take Open to the Warp, which is going to cause enemies affected by your abilities to take a stacking negative 10 penalty to their next resistance test against your powers. Obviously, we're going to be using this every round, so very nice to have. Next, we'll take Blood Augury. Enemies that are damaged by you experience a percentage increase to damage from warp damage that scales with your perception bonus. And this bonus damage stacks for each hit. So you only get a couple of abilities that deal warp damage, but still, this is very nice. The upgrade you take for your heroic act doesn't matter since you're never going to use it. The next talent you should take is Undam the Sea of Souls. And this is going to cause enemies to have their armor reduced by an amount that scales with your willpower bonus anytime they're under the effect of one of your powers. Obviously, your willpower bonus is going to be massive, so this is really nice. On the same level, you can't increase perception anymore, so go ahead and increase fellowship. On the next level, you can't increase awareness anymore, so just go back to coercion. For your next ability, take Zone of Fear. It's going to create a 3x3 three three zone that causes all characters to pass a willpower test or they must immediately move out of the zone and they'll trigger attacks of opportunity along with obviously taking damage from being forced to move. So very, very nice. This basically gives you another way to damage enemies. Next up, take Threads and Faults. Whenever an enemy fails or resists his test against you, attacks against them gain a bonus percentage chance for critical hit chance that scales with your perception bonus. The effect stacks, but is reset by a critical hit. Obviously, you want your party members getting critical hits in left and right, so this should help. And then the very last navigator talent that you should take is Unnatural Allure, which is going to cause you to gain a plus five bonus to fellowship and an additional plus one to fellowship for every navigator talent and or navigator power taken. This is going to help to make up for the fact that you've been ignoring fellowship this whole time. And again, when you move into Exemplar, you'll have the opportunity to pick up a lot of those officer mechanics that you ignored or grand strategist mechanics uh, if that's your preference. So this will help give you a head start on that. Next up, you've maxed out perception, willpower, and fellowship. 
Ballistic skill, weapon skill, and toughness do absolutely nothing for you. Intelligence does a little bit for you, uh, especially if you're going with grand strategist mechanics, so you might as well put the bonus there. For your next talent, pick up Grenadier. It's actually useful to have just about all of your party members, or at least the party members that are going to be close enough to use grenades. Uh, it's definitely useful for them to have this. It causes your first grenade use in combat to not spend action points, and it does not count towards the attack limit for that turn. Very, very nice stuff. Go ahead and pick it up. For your next common talent, I would take It Will Not Die, which is going to increase your wounds by half of your character level, making you just a little bit more tanky. Obviously, it's not worth taking when your character level is low, but by this time, it's definitely useful. And once again, it doesn't matter what upgrade you choose for your heroic act, you should never be using it. All right, and now finally we have come to Exemplar. By the time you get here, you should already be a monster. Exemplar is going to allow you to dabble in both officer and grand strategist mechanics. Which one you prefer and where you want to go is completely up to you. You could honestly uh, ignore all of those mechanics and you would still be fantastic. In my sheet, it does list out all of the Exemplar talents that I personally would take. You can follow that or you can ignore it. The only thing I would say without a shadow of a doubt you should do is take Malign Influence, and this is going to trigger when an enemy fails a willpower resistance test against you, and it's going to cause them to suffer direct damage that is equal to twice your willpower bonus, which will be massive, and on success the damage is doubled. Definitely, definitely want to pick this up first. The rest is up to you. And then finally, I thought some of you might want to go over the gear. To be honest with you, I'm not all that impressed with the gear available for a navigator. I feel like a lot of this really isn't all that great for her. Hopefully that's changed a little bit in the full game and there are more options to optimize a character. But for the helmet, I have Helmet of the Devoted Protector, which is going to grant her immunity to enemy critical hits. For the first three rounds of combat, a bunch of your fights will not go past three rounds. And so this is just going to help to ensure that she stays on her feet. I also gave her armor, which is light armor. You definitely want to keep light armor on her. Nothing should be impacting her dodge. And speaking of which, this armor has a base property that uh, divides her awareness by 10 and gives that percentage added to dodge, which is obviously fantastic for her. So definitely felt like this worth picking up. For the necklace, um, she's granted an additional dodge equal to her intelligence bonus. And it actually is granted to both her and all of her allies. So um, this is probably this is nice for her. Uh, I probably put it on Pascal instead, but I don't remember what necklace I have for him. So maybe there's a good reason why I didn't put this on him. Uh, for the rings, she gets a plus 10 bonus to awareness. Not all that great. She's got plenty of awareness anyway. So it'd be nice to have something else. And then the other ring just gives her a shadow field effect that uh, counts as being in full cover against all ranged attacks. And then that effect is lost when she's hit by a ranged attack. So just a little bit better defense, not bad, but still not really anything navigator specific. For the gloves, when she deals damage, uh, enemies suffer warp damage with armor penetration of 10% for each cell the enemy has moved during uh, your turn. So obviously this really, really helps uh, with some of the force movement effects that she has. So that's kind of nice. And then with the cape, it just extends the range of our officer archetype abilities by one cell. I didn't really find any good capes for her. The boots allow her to raise momentum to 175 whenever she kills five enemies in a row on one turn. This actually happens all the time. So it's very, very easy to trigger this. And obviously it's very, very useful. And then finally for her staff, she's got a warp focusing staff. It's got the castigating effect, which is definitely the effect that I prefer the most out of all the different options because it's going to inflict a penalty to all the characteristics of enemies that are targeted by my powers. And this uh, penalty can actually stack every time I use powers against those enemies. And enemies that are targeted by her suffer 11% more damage from all sources. And it stacks a number of times up to her perception bonus. So just all the way around, this is fantastic. And of course, it's also increasing both her willpower and perception, which are her key characteristics. So yeah, this is great. And that's it. Hopefully this gave you an idea of how to effectively use Kasia for your own run. As always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and I'd be happy to help. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.